communism scared the hell out of Americans. Two types of communism. One is the international threat, which found itself uh, exploded into, world, into war in Korea in June of 1950. It was one thing, though, to fight communism around the world with the military involvement and whatever and the stationing of troops in unprecedented numbers of millions around the world. It's quite another thing, though, to feel that there are commies at home, that somehow the Reds are waiting to take over this country. You can't trust the person next to you. He might be a communist. The movies you see may be communist-inspired. The music you listen to, the personalities who are performing may be sympathetic with leftist goals. That somehow anybody who criticizes the country is at least helping the enemy, if not really part of the cadre of uh, subversives working to overthrow this country. And so much of our culture was geared toward that. So much of our politics was geared toward that. It was a very fruitful, very profitable line for politicians to take. In the 1952 presidential elections, the Republicans had not held the White House in 20 years. They discovered that anti-communism was a very effective tool in scaring Americans into voting for Republican candidates. They had tried it in, 1940, in 1950 and particularly in 1948, and it worked to a degree in 48, but Truman himself had been in favor of loyalty oaths and had passed uh, rules and had signed laws that established loyalty oaths. So it wasn't quite the same as it would be in 1952. Meanwhile, in 1952, there was also a war going on that, ironically, most Americans didn't want to be involved in, in Korea. So the whole notion of communism and fighting communism and subversion at home are all part of a, uh, a mindset that creates fear. And when people are afraid, they conform even more. I think the conformity, the social conformity of the 1950s, in part, is created or enhanced by this national fear of subversion. Not so much the fear from outside as the fear from inside. There was the fear of outside, of course, and children received doses of it from the first day they hit school. In California, you had earthquake drills, you had fire drills, and you had atomic bomb drills. All of them basically, fire drill was walk out. The bomb drill and the earthquake drill was hit the floor, dive underneath your desk or your table or whatever it was, and cover your head with your hands and bend down in a little fetal position. So that in infants, what, six years old, five years old, are learning to protect themselves from this blast that's going to come out of the sky that these enemies are going to deliver on us, and they are being assisted by enemies within the country. We had television programs that were extremely popular, movies and radio shows that were also popular that dealt with the theme of fighting communist subversion at home. I Was a Communist for the FBI was a book based on the life of a counterintelligence or a uh, uh, of FBI mole working in the Communist Party. It became a radio show in the early 50s. It was made into a Warner Brothers motion picture. I Led Three Lives was another FBI uh, counterintelligence agent who wrote a book based on his experiences in Boston. It became a syndicated television program called I Led Three Lives in which Richard Carlson portrayed Herb Philbrick through about 120 half-hour episodes that were played over and over and over again throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, and into the 1980s. All of it showing you that these are, there are selfless heroes of the FBI, in this case, who are out there risking life and limb to protect you from communist cells that are working to overthrow your government. Now, in reality, they didn't arrest communists for blowing up trains. There was no sabotage. There was no threat in that real sense, but there was a threat in the mines. And the mass culture helped to establish the threat in the minds of millions of people. So it's all part of the, this, this tremendous pressure that is on people growing up and people who have already grown up in the 1950s. Quite frequently, too, the, uh, the anti-communists used the example of Hitler to explain what communism was about. Hitler had expanded and wanted to take over the world. Co Joe Stalin, Malenkov, Molotov, they were all the same. They're all world conquerors out to gobble up the, 
the planet for their home country. Now, communism, uh, as it appeared in other countries, didn't exactly work that way. It really grew up from within the country and the demands for change within countries, particularly in the decolonizing areas like Southeast Asia. But Americans were told it's all part of a master plan, a monolithic communist conspiracy, ultimately to conquer the world. And we saw it and beat it once with Hitler. We're seeing it. We can beat it again and uh, destroy communism. 